Okay? So that will be next Friday there. So the same thing as we have before. So what we're going to do today is maybe go over the module one by one. Okay. So whenever we, we go over the module, so we're already on this part right now. So today is what, November 8th, there, right? So we're supposed to do with module six already, but it's fine because we don't have a meeting last week, okay? So, where's the module? So your guide on what you need to know in a given module is given in what? The learning outcomes, okay? In fact, as I've told you, Usually the module is just the main source that you need to study and the links that is assigned to that. So we will have all the resources to prepare yourself for the exam with the additional resources that I gave you. I didn't only give you what the uh, links to my recorded lectures, but I also gave you some test box question to help you prepare for your exam, okay? so. At the end of this module, this is what we need to know. So define energy and enumerate the different forms. So we started doing that last time, right? In the, uh, we only have four and five in, in this, what we call exam, okay? You don't, I, I don't know why they don't want module three, but I think it's for your own benefit. Just do what the module said, because this is a departmental exam and I'm just doing my part. And my part is to make sure that you're given all the necessary help, okay? To prepare you for the exam. And it's up to you if you're going to do your part to prepare for the exam, okay? May, the problem arises if one of the uh, people don't play their part, okay? So they, they said mo the module four and five. So ano na lang natin na yun talaga yung exam. And they have, I think, a reason for doing that. Okay, even I, I was surprised, okay, that they don't include uh, module three because it's going to prepare you for the organic chemistry once you do that. So we have started with the energy. So it's capacity to do work, the different forms. You can go with the energy in motion, which is kinetic energy, energy in position, which is uh, potential energy. And then in the previous slide that, that, that we have talked, uh, we have some energy there, the radiant energy, okay? A thermal energy, chemical energy, nuclear energy, and other forms of what we call the energy that we have discussed uh, during that time, okay? And then the, the, the next thing that we're going to talk about is the so-called thermochemical equation, okay? So when we're talking about thermochemical equation, how is it different from a typical chemical equation? So if we have a definition of chemistry at the beginning, we said chemistry is what? Ano yung definition natin sa chem? Hmm? Chemistry is the science of matters. And if we want to expand it and the changes that it undergo. So what do you do? What do you need for these changes to happen? Anyone? What do you need for the changes to happen? You need? Energy. Energy, okay? In some book, they, they, they're going to define it. Chemistry is the science of matter and the energy accompanying these changes. That's why you have what we call thermochemical equations. And from that, you will have this concept of exothermic and endothermic reaction, okay? We have already started 
uh, discussing about this endothermic and exothermic equation, right? You, you, you recall the endo and the exo? Yes. Okay. So it, 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 I'm going to what we call look at it, uh, or we could say summarize it. I'm trying to find. So if we summarize the endothermic reaction, so usually it involves this so-called enthalpy, right? So if we have the uh, endothermic reaction, so what do we have here? Energy is absorbed. So it's what? Surroundings to system, am I right? You still remember what a system and a surrounding is? A system is the one that you study, and anything that surrounds it is the surrounding. Okay, so usually energy is absorbed. What happened to the surrounding? It becomes cold. Okay, so we could say heat is absorbed also. And in terms of the uh, chemical energy, uh, the energy profile, what, how, how do we have here? Is it like this? This is the reactants, and this is the products, right? Tama ba? So that means the difference here is positive maybe in terms of delta H or energy. Because the energy or the enthalpy of the products is higher than the energy of the reactant. So your delta H is positive. Now for exo, or we could say another thing that we have here, energy enters the system. Now for exothermic reaction, what do we have? Energy exits the system. Energy is what? Release. So it is from surroundings going to the system. Right? So if you have that, it will be like this. So this is the reactants and this is the products, right? So if you're going to look at the delta H there of the products minus the delta H of the reactants, what is the delta H that you have there? Usually it's negative. Okay. Yeah, it is uh, what? Oh, this is. Mali ako dito. Ay, naku. So this should be the other way around. The, si the system going to... Ano ba yan? Kira lang, ha? No, no, no. Keep. I have to... Kamali ako dun. Thank you for noticing it. So it should be system to the surrounding. So it's from the system going to the surrounding. Now we can have a specific example here, like this one. So we're going to look it in terms of enthalpy. Nakikita niyo ba yung enthalpy slide, class? Yes. Okay, so when we're talking about enthalpy, it's used to quantify the heat flow into or out of a system in a process that occurs at constant 
pressure. Okay, so the delta H can be what? Heat that is given up or absorbed during a reaction of constant pressure. So here, this ideally tells us right here, and then you go over that. So that's the enthalpy. So as you're going to look at here, heat is absorbed. So heat is the form of energy that you have there. How, how many forms of energy do we have? Heat and what's the other one? What's the two forms of energy in a chemical system? Heat and What's the other one? Work. Okay. So here we're just talking about heat. Work is only uh, applied on gas expansion or gas compression, which we're going to discuss later. So here, as you could see, the delta H okay, of the products It's lower than the delta H of the what we call reactant compared to uh, ano ba yan? Kamali ako. Dala nga na ano yung oh shoot where is it? Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. So if you're going to look at the delta H here, okay. So if you have the endothermic reaction, so this is your uh, what we call reactants, and this is what we call the products. So for you to arrive to the products, okay? So this is a typical example of ice melting at room temperature. So for the ice to melt, okay, the heat coming from the room temperature is enough for you to transform your ice into liquid water, okay? So doing that case, if you're going to look at the difference here between the delta H of the products over the delta H of the reactant. So you could see here, okay, the difference is you're going to have a positive value. Tanggalin ko lang, that's medyo nakakaano yan eh, nakakalito. Okay, so if you're going to look at here in terms of the delta H, okay, so the delta H of the product is higher than the delta H of the reactant. So if, if you're going to look at the difference between the two, there is a delta H that is a positive value. Now on the other hand here, okay, it's the other way around. So the delta H of the product is less than the delta H of the reactant. So you started at higher energy level and then it goes to a lower energy level. So in doing that, you have energy that is being given up, okay, to the surrounding. So heat absorbed by the system from the surroundings and heat given up by the system to the surrounding. So that's the difference between these two, okay? Now, you may ask the question, is the delta H negative or positive here? What do you think? And in delta H, John, you can ask the question, which of the following is an endothermic process or a true or false question? Is this reaction endothermic? Is this reaction exothermic? Okay. So if you're going to do that, this would be a positive delta H. The system absorbs the heat 
Okay, so this is endothermic. So the delta H that you have there would be positive. Okay, now how do we write it in terms of a thermochemical equation? So we can have it like this. Okay, so you have H2O uh, in solid form going to H2O in liquid form, and that is equivalent to this value. Now, enthalpy is what we call an extensive property. So when we're talking about extensive property, the magnitude of your enthalpy depends on the amount of your material. So if I put two here, two here, what will happen to the delta H? Anyone? Okay. So the delta H will also be double because it is an extensive property, depends on the amount. Now, if I'm going to reverse the reaction, what will happen to the delta H? Anyone? Negative. Yeah. So the sign will be reversed also. So that will become negative. Claro Bayon? You can have a question like, is this an endothermic reaction? Is this an exothermic reaction? Some sort of that. Simple stuff that if you don't understand, you're going to guess. Okay. Now, in the exothermic reaction, I would say you have a higher reactant energy level going to a lower product energy level. And if you're going to write the thermochemical equation, this is how you're going to do it. Now, what happened? Or how are you going to interpret this one? This negative 890.4 kilojoule, this is just for one mole of methane. So what if I say, what's the energy needed if you're just going to utilize one mole of oxygen? What will happen to the delta H? Hmm? If I make this into one, so that means I divide everything by two, right? So what will happen to the value of your delta H? Okay, it will also be half. That's just uh, linking you to the extensive property of enthalpy. So whatever you do here in the reaction, you're also going to do in the enthalpy value. So how do I make it into one? I divide it by two. So I'm going to divide everything by two. Clear? Clear the class? Yes, possible. So you, you can look at it, the, st the stoichiometric coefficients always refer to the number of most of a substance. If you reverse the reaction, the sign of delta H changes, okay? If you multiply both sides of the equation by a factor of N, then delta H must change the same factor of N. So if I make this two, you also multiply that by two, okay? So in a thermochemical equation, the physical states of all reactants and products must be specified in thermochemical equation like this. So you have to put everything. So how are we going to do this here? How much is this evolved when 266 grams of white phosphorus burn, burn in air? So let's say ito yung binigay sa inyo. Anyone? Ayusin ko lang ha. Okay. 
this word. I just want to make sure maayos yung ano. Ayusin ko lang. Ay, come on. There you go. So, paano natin isasolve to? Because you might have some problem like that in your Excel. How do we solve that? So, we're going to get the equivalent of moles of 266 grams of white phosphorus. So, we multiply it by 1 over the molar mass. And then, we have the equivalent of moles. So, we multiply it with negative 303 there. So this is the equivalent that we need. Now you might say, is the symbol important? Yes. Okay. So the reaction itself is what? Release of energy. So what we're talking about here, this is just the amount of energy that was released. So you can always put a negative there to be consistent with the thing here. Because the, the sign just tells you what? Anyone? The sign just tells you the direction. <laughs> So if it's a negative, it is what? From the system going to the surrounding. If it's positive, it's from the surrounding going to the system. Now here it's clear, evolve. The word here is evolve. So this is it that is being released, okay? So it's understood that it's going out, okay? Question so far? So how can we differentiate the delta H and the delta E? Okay, my question? Yeah. Either you ask it or you type it. So the 3013, is, where, where did they get the 3013? The 3013 is this one. Because what we're trying to do, okay, what is the equivalent of this in moles? Because we have the value for every moles of the phosphorus. And then the question being asked, how do we know if the equation is exothermic or endothermic? We use this negative or positive sign. So this reaction is what? Exo-endo. You might give in this reaction and you are asked, is this reaction endo or exo? Anyone? Exothermic. Exo. It's exothermic because the sign there is a negative. Clear? Did I answer the question? So that, that is a thermochemical equation. It tells you whether your reaction is endothermic or exothermic. Did I answer the question? Okay. Now you may ask yourself, what if or how is delta H different in delta E? Now here we assume that the delta E is just the delta H at constant pressure. Okay. Now, how do we differentiate the two? So delta E is a combination of what? Delta H, which is the heat, and W. Okay? So for instance here, the thermochemical equation that we have here, when we have sodium solid in water, you produce NaOH and gas. 
So that means there's an expansion or compression of the gas here. So in that case, enthalpy is not the only source of energy. You have to consider what? This one. And that is what? Anyone? Ano yung P delta V? What does it represent? Anyone? Class? What does it represent? That is your? Pressure volume. Yeah, what is pressure volume? That is your? That's your work. Work is only involved in the reaction if there's a gas expansion or a gas, uh, what we call compression. Now, what do you think is the delta V here, positive or negative, based on this given information here? What is the delta V? Is the delta V positive or negative? Positive. The delta V would be positive because here, okay, the volume is like this. And then if you're going to look at here, it expands. So that's your delta V. And if you're going to look at the value that you have there, that is equals to what? 2.5. Okay, but since you have a negative sign on that, you're going to subtract it from this. So the delta E that you have here is the whole heat plus work, or we could say the heat that you have there is Q. Okay. Now we can discuss about this Q because the next thing that we have here is the so-called uh, first law of thermodynamics. So what is the first law of thermodynamics? This is just the law of conservation of energy. Energy ca ca cannot be created nor destroyed. It can only be transformed from one form to another. Okay. So if we're going to look at this form of the first law. This is just this. Ito yung main source no reaction natin okay the internal energy of the system so q is the heat and w is what we call the work so w that is the negative of p delta v so when the gas expands against a constant external pressure okay so you could say the work is done by the system when it is negative, because there's a negative sign here. So when it expands, delta B is positive times negative, it will give you negative. Now, if you're going to look at the gas compress, so the delta B here is a negative, so negative times negative, we give you a positive sign, so that means the work is done by the surroundings. So. These are the questions that they usually ask on the exam. And this is the confusing part. So I want you to master that thing. Okay? Now, your advantage is you have an open notes during the exam. But still, it is advantageous that you know the concept beforehand. I think one of the reasons you didn't do well is you're confident that it is open notes, so you didn't study. I, I don't know. That's just my hypothesis. You're the only one who can confirm it. If I'm right or wrong. Okay? But this is how you look at this, uh, what we call expansion or compression of the gas. Clear? Tanong? Libre magtanong.
So we're just talking about here the first law of thermodynamics. So the first law of thermodynamics, that's where we have the enthalpy. Okay, so may nagtatanong. Well, it depends. Sometimes they will ask you to uh, what we call determine the enthalpy. But in a thermochemical equation, that should be included. And just what we call as a summary, uh, you should know what is the difference between endothermic and exothermic. And you should know the example of an exothermic or endothermic reaction. Because you might be given question, which of the following is an exothermic reaction? Which of the following is an endothermic reaction? So what, what, what's the thing that you need to remember in the endo and the what we call exo? Okay. So endothermic, if you're going to look at it, the delta H is what? Positive. Exothermic, the delta H is negative. So that's the thing that you need to remember. Question. Before we go with Heslo. Tano. So in Heslo, this is just the summation of all the other reaction. And when you add all the reaction, the resulting delta H is just equals to the sum of all the enthalpy of the added reaction. And if you're going to look at my recorded lecture, there I, I have a lot of example that was given there. So the one that I'm going to work here is just this one. How are we going to solve the delta H for this? So we're going to do the, the problem, okay? So we're going to write all the reactions. So that's C6H4. We have an OH2. So that's AQs. And then you have C6H4. O2 plus H2, right? And the delta H that you have there, that's what? Plus 177.4 kilojoules. And then you have H2 plus gas reacting with O2, producing H2O2. So you have here what? A gas. And then you have an AQ. So this is negative 191.2 kilojoules. And then here, H2 gas plus one half of oxygen, giving you water, which is gas. And you have what? Negative 241.8 kilojoules. And then here you have H2O gas producing H2O liquid. So this is negative 43.8 kilojoules. So what is the overall reaction when we add it, C6H4OH2AQs plus H2O2 AQs producing C6H4O2 AQs, which is the one that we have here, plus water to H2O liquid. So what do we do 
We can reverse reaction. We can multiply reaction by this uh, number. And whenever we do that, we also have to do that thing to the delta H. So what do we think we need to do? Hmm? I know. What do we do? So if you're going to look at the air, so the H2O2 is in the reactant and this is in the product. So that means we're going to reverse this. Right? So this will become positive. And what else do we see? There's two water here. So you only have one here. So that means I have to multiply this by two. What else? So I have two water gas here. I only have one here. So that means I have to multiply this also by two. So two over two will give you oxygen and then one H2 here, another H2, there's two H2, and then one oxygen, and then one oxygen. Are we done? This one. So we multiply this also by two. Ay, mali, sorry. Thank you for letting me know. So ito yung nangyari. So I reverse the second reaction. So I reverse from negative to positive. I multiply the two by two, the, 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 the third and the fourth reaction. And then I cancel out what is common on both sides. So when I added this, you should get around the answer that is provided that negative 202.6. Please do it yourself. Convince yourself. Question? Then on. Hello po, sir. Hmm. Medyo hindi po ako nakasunod. Pwede po kang paulit. So if we're going to write the reaction, So if we're going to write it again, okay. So the original that we have is this. So 
it's not the, the original is H2 gas plus O2 producing H2O2 gas and that's originally 191.2 and then you have H2 plus one half O2 that's just H2O gas and it's 241.8. So this is the original one. And then you have here H2O gas and then H2O liquid. So that is 43.8. So what we're going to do, we need the final reaction to be like this. So as you could see, the H2O2 is in the reactant side, but in the original is in the product side. So what we're going to do, we reverse that. So we put here H2O2 producing H2 and oxygen. So that becomes a positive because we reverse the reaction. Everyone got that? Maybe it answers the questions that you have. Okay. And then what, what do we what, what do, we do? We have two liquid water here. So we only have one. So that means we have to multiply both of them by two. And in doing that, we multiply this by two. Now, as you could see, we satisfied the two water here, but if you're going to look here, there's two water of gas here, but there's only one water of gas there. So that means we multiply this reaction, the third reaction also by two. And whatever you do in the reaction you do with the enthalpy. So in that case, this now becomes one. Okay, we cancel this. We cancel the oxygen. So you have two hydrogen here, one hydrogen plus another hydrogen. So we end up this here, this here, this over here, and this over there. And all we need to do is just add everything here. And that would give you this answer. Claro? So question. Before we go with the second law of thermodynamics. Question? So that is what we call the Hess law. Now, in the second law of thermodynamics, we are introduced with the concept of the so-called entropy. So entropy is just a degree of disorderliness. So they found out when a reaction happens, there's some sort of a degree of disorderliness or orderliness that is happening. So for instance, what do you think happened when you have water from the gaseous state going to water in the liquid state? Did it become more ordered or more disordered? Disordered. So, or what would be the value of your delta S? So you have your gas going to the liquid. Will it become more ordered or more disordered? Disordered. 
Okay? So, delta S is just the degree of disorderliness or randomness. So, if you have from gas going to the liquid, it is what? More ordered. It becomes more ordered. Why did I say it's more ordered? So, if you're going to look at the liquid, they have the intermolecular forces of attraction compared to the gas that are moved at random. Okay? And if you're asked, what's the delta S of this reaction? Will it be positive or negative? Those are the type of questions that you have in your exam. And if you understand the concept, you should be able to answer them correctly. So if you have here gas going to liquid, the delta S will be what, positive or negative? So you have here a disordered state going to an ordered state. So you have a delta S that is negative. If it's the other way around, the delta S will be positive. The guide that you will have is this. When you have a solid going to the liquid, the delta S is positive because liquid is more disordered than solid. If it's the other way around, the delta S is negative. Now, in terms of liquid evaporating or boiling to the gas, so you increase the entropy of that. So the delta S is again positive, okay? So if you have gas going to the liquid as the example, the delta S is negative. So if we're going to summarize what is happening here in terms of delta S, it is positive if you become more disordered. It is negative, it will become more ordered or less disorder. So if I have this reaction, N2 plus H3, uh, H2, producing NH3. So if I'm going to do it, I think it will be like this one. What is the delta S? I put here a gas, a gas, a gas. And in delta S, yeah, positive or negative? I should, I had a one. <laughs> so if you have here the delta S, positive, more disordered, negative, more ordered or less disorder. So if I have the reaction here of nitrogen with ammonia, uh, uh, hydrogen to produce ammonia, what is the delta S? Hmm? So the way that you're going to look at it is look at the system. Did it become more ordered or more disordered? Don't just say right away positive. Don't just say right away negative. You have to analyze. Now, all of them are gas, right? But which one is more? So you have four here compared to two. So which is more ordered, four or two? Which is more disordered, four or two? That's how you analyze if you have a system that becomes more ordered or more disordered. So which do you think is more ordered, four or two? Okay. Ask yourself in real life. Mas madami, mas order ba? Kailan ka efficient? Pag mag-isa o kung meron kang groupmate?
Analyze, don't just guess. Pag may group mate ka, mas or mas may order ka. You, you ask yourself. So alin mas order sa side na to? Ito or ito? I see different answer. So meron kang ganito? Or meron kang ganito? Mas order kayo pag mas madami? Okay. Now what if I tell you that this is more ordered? Ano masasabi nung apat ang nagsasabi ito yung more ordered? Hindi ba sa real life, pag mas madami, mas magulo? Can you convince me why you said this is more ordered? If you are not convinced that two is more ordered, then please convince me that four is more ordered. When we're talking about ordered, what 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 is mean? Disordered. Ano bang disordered? Another word of disordered. Chaotic, right? Now, are you convinced that this is more ordered than this one, which gives the delta S as what? Positive or negative? Huh? Ano ngayon yung delta S? Is it a positive or a negative? Positive. Huh? Look at the given here. Is it a negative sign or a positive sign? Don't guess. Understand. Okay? So it becomes more ordered, so this one is negative. Are you convinced? Now, if I put it like this, and in delta S nyo, negative one. Ayun iba. Black or white? Okay. So if you're going to look at this, this is what? More disordered going to more ordered. So that is a negative sign. Convinced? These are the type of questions that you will have in your second exam. And that's in a week. 
Okay. Now, why do they need to do this concept? Because they're trying to find if they can predict whether a reaction will be spontaneous or not by just looking at the enthalpy. So what is this spontaneous reaction means? Anyone? What is this spontaneous reaction means? This is a process or reaction that happened on its own without outside intervention. Okay? So example that I have to uh, that I want to show you with this spontaneous reaction is let's say I'm going to remove my background. So if I have this pen, what will happen to the pen if I release it? it spontaneously it fall down. Is there an outside intervention? None. But what's the reverse of that? There should be an outside intervention because I have to use my other hand to put it back where it is. Unless I'm a Jedi, have a force and they said, okay, go up pen. But that won't happen in real life because there's no such thing as the force. Now in a chemical system, when you put, let's say an ice at room temperature, what will happen to the ice? Spontaneously, it will what? Hmm? Melt. Spontaneously, it will melt. Okay. So the thing is, they try to determine by looking at the enthalpy if they can predict the reaction to be spontaneous or not. But what happened? So if you have an ice melting to water, what is that? Is that endothermic or exothermic? When ice melts to water, that's exothermic or endothermic? Hmm. Exothermic. Is it exo? When you have this reaction? What's the delta H of that? Is it positive or negative? Awesome. Those, those are the type of questions that you will have. And those are easy questions if you got it. Kailangan nyo ba ng energy or i-release yung energy? Kailangan. So kailangan. So kung kailangan, ano siya? Positive or negative? Positive. positive. So that's a positive. Okay? Because the system needs the energy to melt the solid ice into a liquid. So that is a spontaneous reaction. Okay. Now, what happens if you burn something like CH4? We burn it with oxygen. You form H2O and CO2. What's the delta H of this? Positive or negative? This is burning of methane. Does it absorb energy or release energy? Anyone? So the delta H that you have here would be negative. Now, both of these reactions are what? Is spontaneous. Okay? Now, let's apply this in real life. Failing an exam. 
Is it spontaneous or not? Is failing an exam a spontaneous reaction or not? I want your answer. Spontaneous. How about the other? Is failing an exam a spontaneous process? Yes. How about the others? Why do you say it's spontaneous? When you fail an exam, you don't do anything. And when you don't do anything, that means there's no outside intervention. You just log in, you don't listen, you don't watch the, watch the recorded lecture. Okay. You're confident, no, oh, it's open notes. But what will happen if you don't do anything? If you don't do any effort to study, most likely you will fail an exam. You got the message, both on the lesson and the personal thing. <laughs> You get low score because studying, reading your notes, watching the video is an intervention, outside intervention. And that's not a spontaneous reaction. When you say spontaneous reaction, it happens on its own. You don't do anything. So if you don't do anything spontaneously, you will have an exam. You will fail an exam. Here, you don't do anything here. All you need to do is you put the eyes in the room temperature. And what happened after some time, it melts. Here, you have a methane, you put it with oxygen, it releases energy. So it spontaneously, it releases energy. Now, the thing here, the enthalpy cannot predict whether your reaction will be spontaneous or not, but the entropy can able to predict it. What they observe in any spontaneous reaction, the delta S is always positive. There's always an increase in entropy. There's always an increase okay, in what we call Delta S. So you're convinced now that failing an exam is a spontaneous process because you don't do anything, most likely you will fail an exam. Putting an effort is an outside intervention. Okay? So the combination of Delta H and Delta S gives you the delta G. And in terms of delta G, if it's negative, it is spontaneous. And if it's positive, it is non-spontaneous. And usually if one direction of the reaction is spontaneous, the reverse reaction is non-spontaneous. And you should know this table Because they may ask you a question on this. So when is delta G going to be spontaneous? So it happens when you have a negative delta H and a positive delta S. When both of them are positive, it will be spontaneous at higher temperature. And non-spontaneous at lower temperature because you need to make sure that the negative sign is higher than the positive sign for the delta G to be negative and spontaneous. So that's the role of this, what we call Gibbs free energy. Question. Tanong.
question? Metronome class. Hello? You think you can answer questions like this in the exam? Hello. Nagahanap na ako ng tanong. Hindi pa naano yung exam. Okay? Kasi inaantay ko pa yung final decision kung ano yung i-correct. So, some example that I can ask you here is like this. So, yeah, ano natin to? Nasa na yun. So, paano siya sagutin yung tanong na yan? Yes, uh, combustion is always an exothermic process. So, how do you solve this problem? So is it A, B, or C? Do you see the question? So how do you answer this? Anyone? Is it A, B, or C? Asan yung iba? I always see the same people answering in the chat.
So how do we answer it? We look at the notes. So what does we have here? The one that is always delta G is when you have a negative H and a positive delta S. So we go back to the question. Delta, negative delta H and a positive delta S. So if we're going to go back. Which was that condition? A negative delta H and a positive delta S. I think it's C, right? You want the delta H to be smaller than that one because what, what's the formula? What's the formula that you have? The way you're going to answer is, is you look at the given formula. Ano yung formula niya? Delta H minus to delta uh, T delta S, right? So what 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 value you want the delta G to be? You want the delta G to be negative for it to be spontaneous. So that means you want this side to be bigger than that side. You want this to be more positive. So when you multiply it with negative, it will give you a negative sign. And you want this one to be more what? Smaller. So that when you add them together, the negative will always win it. Is that clear? Clear that the answer is C? Yes, but. How about the other? Yes, sir. You answered B. Yes, sir. Okay, somebody answered an A. <laughs> So as I promise you, I'm giving you time to regain your momentum. So I think the weekend I'm going to give uh, a quiz both in the module four and module five. If I'm not mistaken, the module four that we have is just the IMFA. We didn't discuss the properties of the solids and the liquids and the what we call uh, gases that you have there. So just a reminder uh, for the link, module five would cover chapter 11, the ones are lecture material ko at chapter five. Chapter 11 is the solids and liquids, chapter five is gases, okay? And the thermodynamics that we're doing right now, it covers chapter six, chapter 18 and the end part i i think end part it also covers chapter 11 but the thing doing a phase diagram so i want you to look on that material okay uh this is not enough that we meet everything and you just what we call depend on this synchronous meeting you have to do it your way, okay? Or else, as the example that I have is spontaneously, you're not going to do anything. You're going to fail the exam. I hope you're convinced that failing an exam is a spontaneous process because you don't do anything. Most likely, you will fail, okay? So question? Question? 